How does weight loss affect bone health in older adults? Let's check out this weighted vest study. Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel and today I'm diving into an important topic that doesn't get talked about nearly enough and that is how weight loss affects bone health in older adults. So let's dive into it. Weight loss in older adults can be a double-edged sword. On one hand, reducing excess body fat offers the potential for improving metabolic health, reducing joint stress, and lowering the risk of chronic diseases. But how we get there matters, and caloric restriction, the most common weight loss strategy clinicians use, can have unintended consequences. And one of the biggest concerns is bone loss. As we age, our bones naturally become more fragile. Combine that with fewer calories and often less protein, less mechanical loading and less activity, and the skeleton starts to take a hit. This is why some researchers and clinicians are cautious about recommending calorie restriction in older populations, especially if it isn't paired with strategies to protect muscle and bone. So that raises the question, are there ways to prevent bone loss during calorie restricted weight loss in older adults? Now, I know what you're all thinking, Holly, you're going to tell us it's a resistance training again, right? But no, it's not just that. And the results of this study might actually surprise you. So I'm talking about strength training and weighted vests. If you've been following me since 2018, you might remember me wearing a weighted vest throughout my contest preps. And these days, it feels like everybody that I see out walking is wearing one too. So today's question is, can external loading like wearing a weighted vest or structured resistance training help offset bone loss that usually happens as body weight is lost? Well, that's exactly what the invest in bone health trial set out to test and today I'm diving into those details. So here's the issue. As we age, we naturally lose bone mineral density. Combine that with intentional weight loss and you amplify the risk of conditions like osteopenia and osteoporosis. Now these aren't just abstract problems. Hip fractures in older adults often lead to loss of independence and increased risk of mortality. So if an older adult loses, say, 20 pounds, their bones now experience less daily stress, which can accelerate bone resorption. For those wondering, resorption is the process where bone tissue is broken down by specialized cells called osteoclasts, essentially releasing minerals like calcium and phosphorus into the bloodstream. Now we know that bone responds well to mechanical loading, whether it's gravity, muscle tension, or added weight. And resistance training has been shown to moderately slow this type of loss, but it's not a silver bullet. And it requires access to lifting equipment, supervision, and consistent effort, factors that can all limit adherence, especially in older populations. And that's why this study looked at an intriguing alternative weighted vest use. The researchers wanted to know if replacing the lost weight externally, passively, and throughout the day could help older adults maintain their skeletal health without requiring a structured exercise routine. So let's take a look at the methods. What did the researchers do? Well, this was a 12 month randomized clinical trial called INVEST, short for incorporating nutrition, vests, education, and strength training in bone health. It involved 150 older adults aged 60 to 85, all living with obesity and were randomized into one of three groups. The first group was a weight loss only group. These participants followed a calorie restricted plan designed to reduce body weight by 10% using a partial meal replacement system. The diet included adequate calcium, vitamin D and protein to support musculoskeletal health. Group two was weight loss plus a weighted vest. Now this group followed the same diet, but also wore a weighted vest for about eight hours per day, seven days a week. The vest weight gradually increased to match up to 10% of their lost body weight. So if someone lost 20 pounds, the vest would eventually weigh about 20 pounds too. And group number three was weight loss plus resistance training. So in this group, participants did supervised resistance training three times per week, performing eight different upper and lower body exercises at 70 to 75% of their one rep max. Each workout included three sets of 10 to 12 reps, aiming to progressively overload the muscles. All groups were closely monitored and the researchers assessed bone density, 
body composition, various blood biomarkers, and physical function at baseline, the six month mark and at 12 months. The primary outcome of this study was change in trabecular volumetric bone mineral density of the hip bone, measured using quantitative CT, which provides a 3D view of the bone's architecture. A secondary outcome was a real bone mineral density of the hip, and this was assessed using a DEXA scan, which is a more common 2D measure of bone density. So what did the authors find? Well, let's start with the basics. All three groups successfully lost weight with reductions between 9 and 11.2% of their total body mass, exactly as intended. This demonstrates the effectiveness and consistency of the dietary intervention these researchers utilized throughout the study period. In the Weight Loss Plus vest group, participants wore the weighted vest for an average of 7.1 hours per day, and on average about 78% of their lost body weight was replaced in the weighted vest. In the Weight Loss Plus resistance training group, participants attended about 71% of the scheduled training sessions, roughly two sessions per week on average over the 12 month time period. Now, moving on to perhaps the most noteworthy finding, all three groups lost bone at the hip, and there were no statistically significant differences between them. Specifically, the trabecular volumetric bone mineral density at the hip declined by 1.2 to 1.9% across the groups. A real bone mineral density measured by DEXA also dropped similarly across all three groups. It turns out the weighted vest group was not superior to the weight loss group alone. But importantly, wearing a vest was considered non-inferior to resistance training, meaning it performed about the same. Now, when you look at the other measures, total lean body mass declined slightly, around 1.5 to 1.9% in all of the groups. But please keep in mind what I've previously shared on my channel about the inaccuracies of DEXA for measuring skeletal muscle. The resistance training group lost more fat mass and gained more strength, especially in the quads. And only the resistance training group increased physical activity levels significantly over the 12 months. Blood biomarkers showed that bone formation markers, specifically P1NP, increased slightly in both the vested and resistance training groups compared to the weight loss group alone, suggesting a mild biological signal, but not enough to alter the bone mineral density outcomes. So, all this to say, neither intervention fully prevented bone loss, but that doesn't mean there's no benefit to wearing a weighted vest or doing resistance training. Both may still offer valuable functional and metabolic advantages, even if their impact on bone preservation was limited in this study. So what does this all mean? Well, this study tells us a few important things. First, even well-structured resistance training wasn't enough to stop bone loss during a weight loss intervention in older adults. And that might surprise some, given that resistance training is a gold standard for bone loading. But it may take a little more volume and perhaps performed at higher intensity or longer durations to see real changes in older populations. What we do know is that adherence matters and two sessions per week on average might not be enough. Second, the weighted vest intervention, though safe, scalable and well tolerated, wasn't effective in preserving bone mineral density. It seems that just replacing body weight externally doesn't mimic the dynamic loading forces that bone gets from muscle contraction during movement or exercise. It's worth noting that all groups received high quality nutrition, including adequate calcium, protein, and used meal replacements, which likely helped to mitigate some of the bone loss. Additionally, the amount of lean mass lost was lower than expected. Typically in weight loss studies, a 10% total body weight loss is often associated with a 20% lean mass loss. Keep in mind, lean mass loss is not just skeletal muscle. That's the combined losses of water, glycogen, decreases in organ size and connective tissue, as well as muscle. In this study, it was closer to 8%. So that muscle retention may have helped blunt the extent of bone decline across all groups. Lastly, while neither resistance training nor vest use prevented bone loss, resistance training did improve strength, which plays a critical role in fall prevention, a major factor for fracture risk. That's a meaningful outcome, even if bone mineral density didn't change. So what's the big picture? 
If you're an old adult or working out with one, weight loss can lead to significant metabolic health benefits, but it comes with numerous risks for the skeleton. This study suggests that neither resistance training nor wearing a weighted vest alone is sufficient to prevent bone loss fully, at least during a weight loss intervention. However, resistance training still has value for muscle strength, body composition and function. And the vest may be a useful tool to complement other strategies, especially for those who can't lift weights regularly. Going forwards, future interventions may need to combine nutrition, supplements, higher training volumes and higher intensity exercise, or even pharmaceutical support to fully protect bone in this context. This trial makes it clear that more work is needed to solve this problem, especially as the older adult population continues to grow. All in all, this study highlights just how complex weight loss can be in older adults. Even with smart interventions like resistance training or external loading, preserving bone mass isn't guaranteed. But it also reminds us that muscle strength, movement quality and fall prevention are also important factors to consider. There is still more to learn and studies like this help us keep refining how we approach fat loss, especially in aging populations. Well, everybody, I hope you found this video helpful. And if you did, please be sure to like the video, subscribe to my channel, and feel free to drop me a comment below, especially if you work with older adults or have gone through a weight loss phase yourself. I'd love to hear your experience. And if you want to deep dive into more practical evidence-based strategies for health, body composition, and performance, hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on my future videos. And lastly, if you are somebody who's interested in one-on-one -on -one coaching or training programming, jump on over and take a look at my website. All the links are in the description below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video.